I believe in divine appointment. I was born into a devout Muslim home, and God had plans, wonderful plans. I've been there. On the day I was going to kill myself, Jesus revealed himself to me, and he gave me a new life. And if you pray with me, and if you believe with me, God is going to give you a new life today. Jesus Christ is real. He changes life. He changes destiny. And he changes nations. And those nations can change the world. Greetings, dear friends, and welcome to Embracing New Life. In life, some days are more difficult than others. There are days that feel long and unbearable. We might say, when it rains, it pours, feeling as if we have no strength to go on. However, there are some in the world today who go through the unimaginable. They are tortured and tormented daily. We cannot even pretend to understand the pain and the suffering they face. Today, I want to share a story of victims who don't have a voice. I want to share with you the stories of the girls who were sold into sex slavery. Today, there are an estimated 35.8 million people enslaved in the world, according to global slavery. More people are in slavery today than any time in history. Every 30 seconds, imagine, every 30 seconds, another person becomes a victim of human trafficking. Human trafficking is the second largest criminal industry in the world after the drug trade and creates 150 billion, yes, 150 billion dollars in annual revenue. Organizations altogether fighting against human trafficking and human slavery receive only 70 to 100, 100 million dollars a year to do their work. Imagine 150 billion dollars industry and they have to receive 70 to 100 million dollars to fight against 150 billion dollars industry. When I was a Muslim and living in Turkey, my friends in the corporate world openly bragged about going to Thailand, where they found an abundance of girls available to them for only a few dollars a night. In reality, these girls were children, only 10 to 12 years old. Years later, after Jesus transformed my life, I was ministering in America. I met a 27-year-old girl who had been sold to prostitution when she was 12 years old. There, in my living room, she told me the horror she endured for 15 years. When she tried to leave, her pimp branded her with a hot iron. She showed me the marks on her body all over. She became a Christian while she was a prostitute. And in desperation, she prayed to Jesus to set her free. When her pimp received a life sentence in prison for another crime, she received her freedom. She said, nothing compares to being able to go to bed at night when no one is touching me and trying to do things to me. For the first time in my life, I can sleep in peace. We cried together that day. Tears of grief, tears of joy were mixed together as she was set free from shame and guilt. I prayed with her before her first job interview and helped her select an outfit to wear. The clothes were much different from what she was used to wearing. She was considered for a position to be a secretary. The next day, she was as excited as a little girl when she was hired for a secretarial position. There are millions of children like her who are being sold into sex slavery. They have no voice. They have no hope. They think no one cares about them. I am a girl without a voice. I am a victim without any hope. I cost less than food. 
I am raped by many men every day in prostitution. I go into a little room, which means torture and torment to me. But that same room means pleasure to many. It means to satisfy men's starving evil desires and evil appetite with my little body. I am more afraid if my customer is going to torture me physically. I am more afraid of that than rape because many beat me up or tie me up to a bed before raping me. There are times I say, death must be better than this life. Probably I say this to myself every day. When I am sick, I don't have a mother to bring me a bowl of soup. I don't have a loving father to hug me. Men want one thing from me, and it is not a hug. You don't receive hugs in a brothel. Some of us are sold to sex slavery by our parents who couldn't afford to feed us or themselves. Some girls are abducted and drugged to be brought into a world of torment. I never had a childhood. I never had a dream. I don't have any hope. I don't know what love is. Men come and say I love you and pay $1.50 to rape me. He says I love you. What is love? Did he really mean it? If he loved me, why did he rape me? Is there anyone who cares? I don't know. I'm a little girl who was sold into sex slavery. I don't have a voice. Will you be a voice for me? My guest today is a man who took such a stand with his wife to save lives of girls from sex slavery. Pastor Don Brewster is an abolitionist. He's a freedom fighter. He's a voice for the voiceless. He's the founder of Agape International Missions. He and his wife moved to Cambodia and freed 200 girls from sex slavery. It was just the beginning of their story. Dear Don, thank you for joining me today. I watched the video about your organization with my team and we couldn't stop weeping. And I just want to personally thank you for what you do to set these precious girls free. You know, this, this opportunity that you've given us, we're so grateful to get the word out that um, you know, the truth is Christians, we're called to, uh, we're not called actually, we're commanded to stand with the oppressed and fight injustice. And uh, my hope is that more of followers of Christ will get involved in this battle because they're desperately needed. Absolutely. Uh, I want to uh, give you the platform right now. Please tell us the story behind AIM. Initially, uh, I was pastoring a church in Northern California, and uh, we supported missionaries in uh, Philippines and Cambodia. And we're on a short-term trip to Cambodia uh, in 14 provinces in 10 days doing leadership training and talking to pastors and other Christian leaders about issues that they had to deal with and helping them develop plans to overcome them. What was interesting is during that time and really speaking to over a thousand Christian leaders in the country, no one ever mentioned child sex trafficking. Uh, when, uh, when we were about to leave, the trip was a very difficult one on my bride. And when we're about to leave, we're getting on the plane and she says to me, I, I thank God we never have to come back here again. Uh, obviously, God had a different plan. Uh, but when we got home, we were home for just a, a couple of days, and there was a documentary on television called Children for Sale. And we learned about the, the tragic uh, evil of sex trafficking in Cambodia. And God really spoke to us at that time that we have four children. We have 12 grandchildren. Uh, three daughters, seven granddaughters, and wonder if one of them were trapped in a situation like that and we could do something um, or someone else could do something and refuse to do it, how would we feel? And so at that moment, uh, we decided that uh, we would go back to Cambodia with a team of experts and take a look at what were the, what were the needs, what, what needed to be done. Uh, uh, we spent uh, several weeks there 
and uh, brought people with a vast array of expertise. And, and in the end, what was clear is that there were four areas of the fight uh, that needed to be addressed. Uh, one was prevention. Um, another was rescue. Uh, another is restoration, restoring the girls that are, are rescued. And then finally, reintegration, bringing uh, girls back into the culture, not only as healed, but as truly as Christian advocates in, uh, in the fight against sex trafficking. But we also knew that we couldn't do all four things at once. Um, and the greatest need at that point when we started was aftercare and opened our first aftercare shelter. Um, today we have five aftercare shelters and, and work in all four of the areas that I just mentioned. Um, touching uh, over 10,000 people each year through the various ministries. That's wonderful. Um, I am sure you all faced a lot of obstacles, and I want to ask you what kind of ob obstacles did you face at the beginning, and what are the obstacles remaining today for you and for your team there? Okay, well, I would say one of the things, initially, we were not welcomed by the government. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, it, um, on a national level, the, it, there was nothing put in our way. There was nothing to help us. Uh, and on a local level, where the specific places we were doing ministry, the local government was actually doing things to, to prevent us from being able to move mm -hmm. forward. Uh, but over time, that, that changed as, as they saw that... that uh, that Christ was bringing um, uh, new life, a transformation of these communities that we went into um, and, and meeting needs, uh, a wide variety of needs. And of course, most importantly, their eternal need. But from their pers initial perspective, those temporal needs that they had, uh, we began to win favor uh, with the local uh, people. And we, um, especially the government, and then uh, we were able to make some connections with the anti-trafficking uh, police in Cambodia at the highest level, at the, the general over anti-trafficking. Uh, and the result was us being able to uh, in, begin an investigation team, which is just a little over a year old, um, and because there, are, there is corruption within the Cambodian police. But uh, because of our relationship with some of the top-level people, uh, God has made a way for our, uh, we call it our SWAT team, God SWAT team, and uh, it has been very successful, not just in rescuing girls, but arresting perpetrators and uh, having them prosecuted, convicted, and staying in prison, which, frankly, a few years ago just did not happen in Cambodia. Uh, I can only imagine we are talking about the size of the revenue of this industry. And of course, you are coming against all kinds of obstacles because of uh, the financial side of the business that they are running. Uh, what kind of reaction do you receive uh, from the locals? If a small brothel with six girls, based on the number of uh, customers that they would have, uh, their revenue would be as uh, much as uh, $750,000 a year. Mm. Again, a small, tiny uh, brothel with six girls in it. And so, the, as you stated earlier in opening the show, the money is tremendous that's being made. And, you know, again, the, the, we're fighting evil, right? We're, which is, it's, an, it's a spiritual battle, but the heart transformation that's needed begins with some type of relationship. Right? We, we do some ministries to build a relationship through which Christ can work to change hearts. Mm -hmm. For example, we have a school in Swai Pak, which is, uh, I, I think it's not arguable that it's the worst place in the world to grow up as a young woman. It's actually where, where my bride and I live, and uh, a big focus of our ministry happens today. But we, we opened a school, uh, and the point of the school was prevention. Right, we were going to prevent uh, children uh, from being trafficked, and it was on two levels. One was on the educational level to provide a high-quality education that would uh, 
that would end that cycle of poverty, which is a part of the issue, not the full issue, but a part of it. Um, and then, um, and then, because our social workers, for any kids that are in our school, we have social workers that do unannounced visits to the family every week to keep track not of only only the kids in our school, but other kids that are part of the family. And so uh, that leveraged with our investigation or SWAT team uh, provides an immediate protection against trafficking as long as well as the long range uh, of uh, quality education. And our goal has been that Swipak, which is a dirty little village um, that's, uh, again, infamous around the world, really, that it would have the best school in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And recently, God, God really did a miracle. We had our students from our school, our third graders entered a uh, science competition put on by Prudential company in Phnom Penh and the 23 top schools in the country and ours, uh, all private schools, were in a competition. The, some of the schools, their tuitions were fifteen to $20,000 a year for third and fourth graders. Our tuition is $16 a year uh, for the kids in Swipak, and a lot of them can't afford that, so their parents work in the school to help us. But everybody thought there would be an embarrassment um, that for those students competing. Well, those students beat all the 10 most expensive schools. They came in second place in the entire country of Cambodia. Wow, that's awesome. Praise and, God. Amen. And what? And beyond that, the kids, some of the teachers that these kids had are uh, rescue survivors that went through our aftercare program that we were able to get them through university and they're teaching those kids in Swipak today. It's truly, truly a miracle. And, and because of it, we protect about 1,200 kids from being trafficked. The kids in the school, about 450 plus their siblings. And recently, uh, we bought property and we're able to break ground. On, we have 3,000 kids on a waiting list to get into the school. Hmm. And we want to expand to, uh, uh, to add another 1,500 uh, students. And uh, what was, again, God just really did a miracle. The provincial governor of the uh, Swipak area came to a groundbreaking ceremony. Wow. And uh, there was uh, five to 700 of the local people met and and he got up and gave a speech. And here's a quote I'd like to read you from his Please. speech. He says, I'm not a Christian, but praise Jesus for what he has done in this community. I praise Jesus for how he has helped when no one else did. Hmm. One of the proudest moments in, uh, for us as ministry leaders was he didn't say aim. He didn't say Don and Bridget. He said he praised Jesus, and uh, and I'm sure I'm sure Jesus is working on him, and I don't believe it'll be long before he he'll be saying that I'm not a Christian, but I am a Christian. Amen. And those are the type of miracles that God is doing uh, through uh, tremendously faithful Cambodian staff and uh, staff of 27 expats hmm. who serve with us that raise their own funds and commit to a minimum of two years serving in Cambodia. Uh, and God is just working through them, really doing miracles on multiple levels. Wow, that's awesome. And it is encouraging for us to hear this because in the midst of all evil, God is at work and he's helping people, great people like Don and his wife and his team. And he's making it possible in the midst of impossible. Don, I want to ask you, how do you reach out to the girls who are victims of sex slavery? We have a limited time, but I want you to tell us about their ages. And, you know, and I, I saw the pink room and everything. On a, in a nutshell, can you share with us uh, what is happening right now? How you reach out to those girls? Okay, right now, uh, we, we actually have an investigative team uh, that, that do, does the investigation into the to brothels or places that sell sex, trafficking rings. Uh, 
Um, and uh, they re, uh, take intel, substantiate it, take it to the local prosecutor who is now on our side, okay. uh, and get the permission to do raids on these brothels. Uh, during the raids, the girls are rescued. Our aftercare home staff of social workers and counselors are there when the girls are rescued to help prepare them to go into aftercare. And the, and the investigative part of the team uh, works on the arrest and eventual prose prosecution. Now, the, the thing is that's different about Cambodia is the age of the girls. Um, we have girls in our aftercare as young as four years old. Wow. Uh, the average girl is eight to 10 years old that, that, that are rescued and in our aftercare. And these are just babies, you know, and, and it is, um, we have, we, we use a cutting edge uh, therapy and we won't spend any time explaining what it is, but it's cutting edge and known around the world as the, the best therapy for victims of uh, sexual exploitation. Exploitation, but really the truth is, uh, it, they get an intellectual knowledge through therapy, hmm. right? They get a knowledge that they're a child of God, that they have value, that they're loved. But the truth is, that doesn't bring healing. That doesn't bring transformation. It's when they experience the truth, they're treated with value. They're treated. They experience Christ's love through our staff. That's when the heart transformation yes. takes place. Hmm. And we have girls, as I mentioned, they're, they're teaching school in our schools. We have survivors that are part of our investigation team that actually go in and rescue girls hmm. as part of the team today. Uh, we, uh, we, we have an employment center, employment centers where we employ uh, where we employ about 400 girls now, and they make things like this T-shirt I'm wearing today. And mm -hmm. but they're employed making a, a good living and, and much different than any garment factory anywhere in the world. And these young women are change; they're really becoming the change agent in Cambodia. Yes, right. They love the Lord. They and they're bold in their faith. And um, and they're really, in the long run, uh, what we can do to equip them mm. and send them out, that's what's going to change, make them, God will change, make that change through them. Absolutely. And uh, today I want our viewers to know that I am dedicating this program to Agape International uh, Missions. Uh, I want people to know, if you know me, you know that I don't do fundraising. I don't do fundraising on, on behalf of other people. And I don't like manipulating or emo using emotions to bring funds to my ministry or to any ministry. But I want to tell you today is the day for you to call this ministry, contact this ministry and make a change in this world. I challenge you for that. And I want to please, I am just bringing this to your attention. You can make a difference. And I want to ask uh, Don today, if someone is watching this program, Don, and wants to support your organization, what are the needs and how they can directly support your ministry? Okay, well, I'll tell you, the, the, our, our number one, we have two number one needs, I guess, the two big priorities. We are actually rescuing girls, uh, Cambodian girls from China hmm. today. Girls who have been tricked to to go to China uh, as uh, to get a new job, but what they're being sold off as brides because of the one child law in Cambodia, way more men than women. Hmm. And um, rescues there are much more expensive to rescue the girl and get them back uh, than it is when we do it within Cambodia. So funding, funding, helping us fund that. And also the school that I mentioned, that preventative agent, if if we get we can be protecting 6,000 children wow. um, from being trafficked uh, when we get the funding for that school. Hmm. And, it, it, and, it's, and it's expensive. It's going to cost a lot of money to build a quality school uh, for these kids. Uh, but it's uh, it's it's not just it's not just change their lives. It's beginning a transformation of a community that's known around the world for the trafficking of little girls 
and transforming it into a community that's known for protecting their children. Dear viewers, you are going to see all the contact information you are seeing right now on our screen. Please contact with Agape International uh, Ministries and uh, please, please make a change. May make an effort to come and fight against evil. Don, I just want to thank you for your stand. I want to thank you for your hard work going through everything that you are going through. I know it is a longer story than you can share. Your pain, your burdens, your suffering on behalf of those children. And mm -hmm. I, I just want to thank you for being the one making that change in this world. You are a world changer. And I truly, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Yes. Thank you. In Matthew, I want to talk about what Jesus says. He says, if you do it for the least of these, if you do it for the least of these, you do it for me, says the Lord. You do it for me in Matthew uh, 25. I want you to understand if we do, the, if we do our part, God is going to do his part. I believe only by the transforming power of Jesus Christ, only through a miracle, can these lives be changed. I want to challenge you today. Help these organizations, help these organizations to fight against sex slavery industry. Don't let the enemy discourage you by saying, oh, there are so many of them. There are millions of them. How can I change the world? It is impossible. No. If you can only save one child, then do it. If you can give a new life to five children, do it for five. I am speaking to mothers and fathers. I am a mother myself. I am talking to all parents and grandparents today. What would you do if it was your child? You would give everything to save her. We are talking about four years old, five years old girls being raped in this illegal industry, I challenge you to take an action today. I challenge you to be a voice for the voiceless. I challenge you to stand in the, in the gap for Christ. If you watch this program, you are responsible and accountable. You cannot say, I didn't know, I didn't hear about this. Jesus said, if you do this for the least of these, these are the least of these, you have done it for me. I am inviting you together we can end this evil. Together we can make a difference. I am calling you people, men, to repent if you are part of sex trafficking, if you are part of sex slavery. I am, make, I am inviting you pimps to repent from your ways. May God open your eyes, you rapists, and you surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. With men, this is not possible. But not with God. With God, all things are possible. We can make a change. And this is your turn today. What you are going to do with what you saw and heard. God bless you.